In mathematics, the complex plane or z-plane is a geometric representation of the complex numbers established by the real axis and the perpendicular imaginary axis. It can be thought of as a modified Cartesian plane, with the real part of a complex number represented by a displacement along the x axis, and the imaginary part by a displacement along the y axis. The concept of the complex plane allows a geometric interpretation of complex numbers. Under addition, they add like vectors. The multiplication of two complex numbers can be expressed most easily in polar coordinates. The magnitude or modulus of the product is the product of the two absolute values, or moduli, and the angle or argument of the product is the sum of the two angles, or arguments. In particular, multiplication by a complex number of modulus 1 acts as a rotation. The complex plane is sometimes known as the argand plane. Notational conventions In complex analysis, the complex numbers are customarily represented by the symbol Z, which can be separated into its real X and imaginary y parts Z equals X plus I Y Display style z equals x plus i y. For example, z equals four plus five i, where x and y are real numbers, and i is the imaginary unit. In this customary notation, the complex number z corresponds to the point x y in the Cartesian plane. In the Cartesian plane, the point x y can also be represented in polar coordinates as x. Y equals R cos theta R sin theta R theta equals x two plus Y two arctan Y X display style x y equals r cos theta r sin theta q quad r theta equals left sqrt x caret two plus y caret two quad arctan frac y x right. In the Cartesian plane, it may be assumed that the arctangent takes values from minus pi two to pi two in radians, and some care must be taken to define the real arctangent function for points x, y when x zero. In the complex plane, these polar coordinates take the form z equals x plus i y equals z cos theta plus i sin theta equals z e i theta. Display style z equals x plus i y equals z left cos theta plus i sin theta right equals z e caret i theta, where z equals x two plus y two theta equals a r g z equals one i lane z z equals Minus i lane z z display style z equals sqrt x caret two plus y caret two quad theta equals a r g z equals frac one i lane frac z z equals i lane frac z z. Here z is the absolute value or modulus of the complex number z theta. The argument of z is usually taken on the interval zero theta. Notice that without the constraint on the range of theta, the argument of z is multi-valued because the complex exponential function is periodic with period 2 pi i. Thus, if theta is one value of arg z, the other values are given by arg z equals theta plus 2 n pi, where n is any integer does not equal zero. While seldom used explicitly, the geometric view of the complex numbers is implicitly based on its structure of a Euclidean vector space of dimension two, where the inner product of complex numbers w and z is given by w z. Display style re w overline z, 
then for a complex number z its absolute value, z, coincides with its Euclidean norm, and its argument arg z with the angle turning from 1 to z. The theory of contour integration comprises a major part of complex analysis. In this context the direction of travel around a closed curve is important, reversing the direction in which the curve is traversed multiplies the value of the integral by minus 1. By convention the positive direction is counterclockwise. For example, the unit circle is traversed in the positive direction when we start at the point z. Topic 1, then travel up and to the left through the point Z. I, then down and to the left through minus 1, then down and to the right through minus I, and finally up and to the right to Z equals 1, where we started. Almost all of complex analysis is concerned with complex functions, that is, with functions that map some subset of the complex plane into some other possibly overlapping, or even identical subset of the complex plane. Here it is customary to speak of the domain of f z as lying in the z plane, while referring to the range or image of f z as a set of points in the w plane. In symbols we write z equals x plus i y f z equals w equals u plus i v Display style z equals x plus i y q quad f z equals w equals u plus i v, and often think of the function f as a transformation from the z plane with coordinates x y into the w plane with coordinates u v. Topic Argand diagram. Argand diagram refers to a geometric plot of complex numbers as points z equals x plus i y using the x-axis as the real axis and y-axis as the imaginary axis. Such plots are named after Jean Robert Argand (1768–1822), although they were first described by Norwegian Danish land surveyor and mathematician Caspar Wessel (1745–1818). Argand diagrams are frequently used to plot the positions of the zeros and poles of a function in the complex plane. Topic: <laughs> Stereographic projections. It can be useful to think of the complex plane as if it occupied the surface of a sphere. Given a sphere of unit radius, place its center at the origin of the complex plane, oriented so that the equator on the sphere coincides with the unit circle in the plane, and the north pole is «above» the plane. We can establish a one-to-one -one correspondence between the points on the surface of the sphere minus the north pole and the points in the complex plane as follows. Given a point in the plane, draw a straight line connecting it with the north pole on the sphere. That line will intersect the surface of the sphere in exactly one other point. The point Z. Topic zero will be projected onto the south pole of the sphere. Since the interior of the unit circle lies inside the sphere, that entire region, Z, 1, will be mapped onto the equator, and the exterior of the unit circle, Z, greater than 1, will be mapped onto the northern hemisphere, minus the north pole. Clearly this procedure is reversible, given any point on the surface of the sphere that is not the north pole, we can draw a straight line connecting that point to the north pole and intersecting the flat plane in exactly one point. Under this stereographic projection the North Pole itself is not associated with any point in the complex plane. We perfect the one-to-one -one correspondence by adding one more point to the complex plane, the so-called point at infinity, and identifying it with the North Pole on the sphere. 
This topological space, the complex plane plus the point at infinity, is known as the extended complex plane. We speak of a single point at infinity when discussing complex analysis. There are two points at infinity positive, and negative on the real number line, but there is only one point at infinity the North Pole in the extended complex plane. Imagine for a moment what will happen to the lines of latitude and longitude when they are projected from the sphere onto the flat plane. The lines of latitude are all parallel to the equator, so they will become perfect circles centered on the origin z equals zero and the lines of longitude will become straight lines passing through the origin and also through the point at infinity, since they pass through both the north and south poles on the sphere. This is not the only possible yet plausible stereographic situation of the projection of a sphere onto a plane consisting of two or more values. For instance, the north pole of the sphere might be placed on top of the origin z equals minus 1 in a plane that is tangent to the circle. The details don't really matter. Any stereographic projection of a sphere onto a plane will produce one point at infinity, and it will map the lines of latitude and longitude on the sphere into circles and straight lines, respectively, in the plane. Equals <laughs> equals When discussing functions of a complex variable it is often convenient to think of a cut in the complex plane This idea arises naturally in several different contexts equals topic multivalued relationships and branch points equals Consider the simple two-valued relationship W equals F Z equals plus or minus Z equals Z one two Display style W equals F Z equals PM SQRT Z equals Z carrot one half. Before we can treat this relationship as a single valued function, the range of the resulting value must be restricted somehow. When dealing with the square roots of non negative real numbers, this is easily done. For instance, we can just define Y equals G X equals X equals X one two display style Y equals G X equals SQRT X equals X carrot one half to be the non negative real number Y such that Y two equals X this idea doesn't work so well in the two-dimensional complex plane. To see why, let's think about the way the value of f z varies as the point z moves around the unit circle. We can write z equals r e i theta and take w equals Z one two equals R E I theta two zero theta two pi Display style z equals re carrot i theta quad m box and take quad w equals z carrot one half equals sqrt r e carrot i theta two q quad zero leq theta leq two pi. Evidently, as z moves all the way around the circle, w only traces out one half of the circle. So one continuous motion in the complex plane has transformed the positive square root E0. Topic: 
1 into the negative square root a pi minus 1 this problem arises because the point z topic 0 has just one square root while every other complex number z does not equal 0 has exactly two square roots on the real number line we could circumvent this problem by erecting a barrier at the single point x 0. A bigger barrier is needed in the complex plane, to prevent any closed contour from completely encircling the branch point Z. Topic 0. This is commonly done by introducing a branch cut, in this case the cut might extend from the point Z0 along the positive real axis to the point at infinity, so that the argument of the variable Z in the cut plane is restricted to the range 0 arg Z. We can now give a complete description of W equals Z one half. To do so, we need two copies of the Z plane, each of them cut along the real axis. On one copy, we define the square root of one to be e zero equals one, and on the other, we define the square root of one to be a pi. Topic minus one. We call these two copies of the complete cut plane sheets. By making a continuity argument we see that the now single -valued function wz1/2 maps the first sheet into the upper half of the w plane, where 0 arg w, w equals g z equals z2-1 1/2, display style w equals g z equals left z caret 2 minus 1 right caret 1/2. Here the polynomial z2 minus 1 vanishes when z topic plus or minus 1, so g evidently has two branch points. We can cut the plane along the real axis, from minus 1 to 1, and obtain a sheet on which g z is a single-valued function. Alternatively, the cut can run from z. one along the positive real axis through the point at infinity, then continue up the negative real axis to the other branch point, z equals minus 1. This situation is most easily visualized by using the stereographic projection described above. On the sphere one of these cuts runs longitudinally through the southern hemisphere, connecting a point on the equator z. topic minus 1 with another point on the equator z 1 and passing through the south pole the origin z equals 0 on the way the second version of the cut runs longitudinally through the northern hemisphere and connects the same two equatorial points by passing through the north pole that is the point at infinity equals Topic restricting the domain of meromorphic functions equals a meromorphic function is a complex function that is holomorphic and therefore analytic everywhere in its domain except at a finite, or countably infinite, number of points. The points at which such a function cannot be defined are called the poles of the meromorphic function. Sometimes all these poles lie in a straight line. In that case mathematicians may say that the function is holomorphic on the cut plane. Here's a simple example. The gamma function, defined by gamma z equals e minus gamma z z n equals 1 infinity 1 plus z n minus 1 e z n display style gamma z equals frac e caret gamma z z prod underscore n equals 1 caret inf t left left 1 plus frac z n right caret minus 1 e caret z n right where gamma is the Euler Mascheroni constant and has simple poles at zero. Minus one, minus two, minus three, because exactly one denominator in the infinite product vanishes when z is zero, or a negative integer. 
Since all its poles lie on the negative real axis, from z equals zero to the point at infinity, this function might be described as holomorphic on the cut plane, the cut extending along the negative real axis, from zero inclusive to the point at infinity. Alternatively, gamma z might be described as holomorphic in the cut plane with minus pi. Notice that this cut is slightly different from the branch cut we've already encountered, because it actually excludes the negative real axis from the cut plane. The branch cut left the real axis connected with the cut plane on one side zero theta, but severed it from the cut plane along the other side theta. Of course, it's not actually necessary to exclude the entire line segment from z. Equals zero to minus infinity to construct a domain in which gamma z is holomorphic. All we really have to do is puncture the plane at a countably infinite set of points 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. But a closed contour in the punctured plane might encircle one or more of the poles of gamma z, giving a contour integral that is not necessarily zero, by the residue theorem. By cutting the complex plane we ensure not only that gamma z is holomorphic in this restricted domain, we also ensure that the contour integral of gamma over any closed curve lying in the cut plane is identically equal to zero. Specifying convergence regions Many complex functions are defined by infinite series, or by continued fractions. A fundamental consideration in the analysis of these infinitely long expressions is identifying the portion of the complex plane in which they converge to a finite value. A cut in the plane may facilitate this process, as the following examples show. Consider the function defined by the infinite series f Z equals N equals one infinity Z two plus N minus two Display style f z equals sum underscore n equals one caret inf t left z caret two plus n right caret minus two. Since z two equals minus z two for every complex number z, it's clear that f z is an even function of z, so the analysis can be restricted to one half of the complex plane. And since the series is undefined when z Two plus N equals zero Z equals plus or minus I N Display style Z carrot two plus N equals zero quad left right arrow quad Z equals PMI SQRT N it makes sense to cut the plane along the entire imaginary axis and establish the convergence of this series where the real part of Z is not zero before undertaking the more arduous task of examining f z when Z is a pure imaginary number. In this example the cut is a mere convenience, because the points at which the infinite sum is undefined are isolated, and the cut plane can be replaced with a suitably punctured plane. In some contexts the cut is necessary, and not just convenient. Consider the infinite periodic continued fraction f z equals 1 plus z 1 plus z 1 plus z 1 Plus Z dot display style F Z equals one plus C F R A C Z 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 D dots. It can be shown that F Z converges to a finite value if and only if Z is not a negative real number such that Z. Z 
Topic: <laughs> Gluing the cut plane back together. We have already seen how the relationship W equals F Z equals plus or minus Z equals Z one two Display style W equals F Z equals PM SQRT Z equals Z carrot one half can be made into a single valued function by splitting the domain of F into two disconnected sheets. It is also possible to glue those two sheets back together to form a single Riemann surface on which F Z topic Z one half can be defined as a holomorphic function whose image is the entire W plane, except for the point W zero. Here's how that works. Imagine two copies of the cut complex plane, the cuts extending along the positive real axis from Z equals zero to the point at infinity. On one sheet define 0 arg z equals 1, by definition. On the second sheet define 2 pi arg z equals minus 1, again by definition. Now flip the second sheet upside down, so the imaginary axis points in the opposite direction of the imaginary axis on the first sheet, with both real axes pointing in the same direction, and glue the two sheets together so that the edge on the first sheet labeled theta equals zero is connected to the edge labeled theta on the second sheet, and the edge on the second sheet labeled theta equals two pi is connected to the edge labeled theta. The result is the Riemann surface domain on which f z equals z one half is single valued and holomorphic, except when z topic zero. To understand why f is single valued in this domain, imagine a circuit around the unit circle, starting with z one on the first sheet. When zero theta, when theta topic. 2 pi we have crossed over onto the second sheet and are obliged to make a second complete circuit around the branch point z 0 before returning to our starting point where theta topic 4 pi is equivalent to theta 0, because of the way we glued the two sheets together. In other words, as the variable z makes two complete turns around the branch point, the image of z in the W plane traces out just one complete circle. Formal differentiation shows that f z equals z 1 2 f Z equals one two Z minus one two Display style F Z equals Z carrot one half quad right arrow quad F carrot prime Z equals text style frac one two Z carrot minus one half from which we can conclude that the derivative of f exists and is finite everywhere on the Riemann surface, except when z topic zero, that is, f is holomorphic, except when z zero. How can the Riemann surface for the function w equals G Z equals Z two minus one one two Display style W equals G Z equals left Z carrot two minus one right carrot one half Also discussed above, be constructed 
Once again we begin with two copies of the Z plane, but this time each one is cut along the real line segment extending from Z. Topic minus one to Z. One. These are the two branch points of G Z. We flip one of these upside down, so the two imaginary axes point in opposite directions, and glue the corresponding edges of the two cut sheets together. We can verify that G is a single-valued function on this surface by tracing a circuit around a circle of unit radius centered at Z equals 1. Commencing at the point Z equals 2 on the first sheet we turn halfway around the circle before encountering the cut at Z equals 0. The cut forces us onto the second sheet, so that when Z has traced out one full turn around the branch point Z equals 1, W has taken just one half of a full turn, the sign of W has been reversed since A pi. Topic minus one, and our path has taken us to the point Z. Two on the second sheet of the surface. Continuing on through another half turn, we encounter the other side of the cut, where Z. Topic zero, and finally reach our starting point Z. 2 on the first sheet after making two full turns around the branch point the natural way to label theta equals arg z in this example is to set minus pi what if the cut is made from z equals minus 1 down the real axis to the point at infinity and from z equals 1 up the real axis until the cut meets itself Again a Riemann surface can be constructed, but this time the «hole» is horizontal. Topologically speaking, both versions of this Riemann surface are equivalent, they are orientable two-dimensional surfaces of genus 1. <laughs> Use of the complex plane in control theory equals In control theory one use of the complex plane is known as the S plane It is used to visualize the roots of the equation describing a system's behavior the characteristic equation graphically The equation is normally expressed as a polynomial in the parameter S of the Laplace transform hence the name S plane Points in the S plane take the form S equals sigma plus j omega display style s equals sigma plus j omega where j is used instead of the usual i to represent the imaginary component another related use of the complex plane is with the nyquist stability criterion this is a geometric principle which allows the stability of a closed loop feedback system to be determined by inspecting a Nyquist plot of its open loop magnitude and phase response as a function of frequency or loop transfer function in the complex plane. The Z plane is a discrete time version of the S plane where Z transforms are used instead of the Laplace transformation. topic quadratic spaces the complex plane is associated with two distinct quadratic spaces for a point z equals x plus i y in the complex plane the squaring function z2 and the norm squared x 2 plus y 2 Display style x caret two plus y caret two are both quadratic forms. The former is frequently neglected in the wake of the latter's use in setting a metric on the complex plane. These distinct faces of the complex plane as a quadratic space arise in the construction of algebras over a field with the Cayley-Dixon process. 
That procedure can be applied to any field, and different results occur for the fields and, when is the takeoff field, then is constructed with the quadratic form x 2 plus y 2 Display style x caret two plus y caret two. But the process can also begin with an z two, and that case generates algebras that differ from those derived from. In any case, the algebras generated are composition algebras. In this case, the complex plane is the point set for two distinct composition algebras. Topic: Other meanings of complex plane The preceding sections of this article deal with the complex plane in terms of a geometric representation of the complex numbers Although this usage of the term complex plane has a long and mathematically rich history it is by no means the only mathematical concept that can be characterized as the complex plane there are at least three additional possibilities. Two-dimensional complex vector space, a «complex plane» in the sense that it is a two-dimensional vector space whose coordinates are complex numbers. See also, complex affine space section two dimensions 1 plus 1 dimensional Minkowski space, also known as the split complex plane, is a «complex plane» in the sense that the algebraic split complex numbers can be separated into two real components that are easily associated with the point x, y in the Cartesian plane. The set of dual numbers over the reals can also be placed into one-to-one -one correspondence with the points x, y of the Cartesian plane, and represent another example of a «complex plane». Topic. Terminology While the terminology, "'complex plane' is historically accepted, the object could be more appropriately named, "'complex line' as it is a one-dimensional complex vector space. Topic. See also Constellation diagram Riemann sphere S plane In phase and quadrature components Real line Notes <laughs> <laughs>